This video is sponsored by MindLab Pro. Stick around to the end of the video to hear more about them. So recently I won my fifth USA Memory Championship and part of the preparation for that, they've added this recent new event called Long-Term Memory, which is memorizing something long-term. And then in the competition, we're tested on it. About a month out from the competition, they'll tell us what we have to pre-memorize and it's a lot of information and we just need to master it. We don't know exactly what they're gonna ask, but it's required to advance to the finals of this competition. So we found out uh, about a month before the championship that we were gonna have to memorize a few things. And one of the things that was most exciting to me was the entire periodic table. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I approached and how I ended up successfully memorizing the entire thing in just a few days. Now, this won't be an exact tutorial how to memorize every single piece of data, but hopefully this will give you some ideas on how to memorize some large amount of information and to get it into your long-term memory fast. Now, as you may know, I'm in an office here. This is actually my university office. I am a teacher, instructor, lecturer, whatever you want to call it, at the University of Miami, and I'm on campus. And we're here because I actually used part of the campus to memorize the periodic table. Let's get out of this office and go out in the field, and I will show you exactly where and what memory palace I used and how I used it to store the entire periodic table. Let's go. All right, so first thing we gotta do is figure out what are we memorizing? Because what I'm gonna do in this video is give you five steps, five tips really, on how to memorize something big for the long term. So the first thing, you know, what are we memorizing here? It's the elements. What are the elements? What is the general overview of what these elements are? This data, what is it? So obviously there's the periodic table with 118 different symbols with some numbers, what do they mean, blah, blah, blah. And then the next question is, how do I need to retrieve this information? Well, in the competition, they could ask me anything. They could ask me, you know, what's the symbol for this element? What's the atomic number for this one? So this leads me to the first tip, which is know your data and be smart. So look at your data, see what you need to learn, first of all, what you don't, or what's kind of gonna be easier to learn maybe without even using any techniques. And then just look at the data in general and see, are there any shortcuts here? Because I know a lot of people who just say, oh, I'm gonna use a memory palace for this, for that. But you don't need to all the time. So when I look at this list, for example, I know a lot of these, okay? But I do wanna know all of them in order. I wanna know all their atomic numbers and masses and all that stuff and be able to go from the name to the number, from the number to the name. But the state, whether it's a gas, solid, or liquid, or the symbol, I don't think I need to include that. Right? The symbols I know mostly, and a lot of them are very intuitive. And there's maybe a handful that are kind of tricky and I can just learn separately outright. In terms of the actual states, you know, solid, liquid, or gas, it looks like all of them are solid, except for two liquids and there's 11 gases. Mm -hmm. I can just learn those just by rote repetition. It's not a lot, it's easy. I can just do that separate. So all I need to worry about are the name, the atomic number, the atomic mass, the boiling point, and then I look at the date of discovery and the discoverer, that looks a little complicated, so I might save that for later. But I need to know those things. The rest, I'll deal with. All right, step number two, and this is what I did, is to basically lay the groundwork in the simplest way. So there's a lot of data here. I'm looking at this and I say, what is the simplest kind of organizational foundational thing I could memorize. And that to me is obviously the atomic number, which is just one through 118. It's an order, it's a list, and the name of the element that goes with each number. Easy. So I just imagine that that's the only thing I have to memorize, and the other stuff I'll deal with later. I'm not gonna go through all 118 now, but let me just go through the first 10 elements that I memorized, one through 10. And here I am on the University of Miami campus. The first thing I had to decide was, where was my memory palace gonna be? 
what was location number one gonna be and what was location number 10 going to be and what was gonna be in between. So I did that beforehand in my mind, or even you can do it on paper, is just decide what was one through 10, or in my case, what was one through 118. And then for each of those 10 things, I basically came up with an image for the element. Some of them are really obvious, some of them I have to think a little bit or be very creative, but ultimately it's the same process as anything. Come up with an image for the weird word that the element is, and then put it in a position in your memory palace that tells you the location. Now I need to make sure that I know those 10 locations really well. So I can recall element five, element seven, element three, element one, just like that. Let's take a look at those 10 locations and what images I would place at each one. Let's go. All right, so we're just coming down from the chemistry department here and our pathway is gonna be down there to the physics department. Okay, how fitting, right? We're doing the elements using the chemistry and physics department. Love it. All right, so our first location is, are gonna be these steps here. And that's easy to remember. It's the entryway kind of down to the physics department here. Number one, which is hydrogen. So what's my image for hydrogen? Just water. And I'm gonna imagine water just kind of flooding, cascading down the steps here. Super easy to remember. We're done. Second, we're gonna come over to this door. This leads to the electrical engineering department. Our next element is gonna be helium. So I'm gonna picture just a bunch of balloons attached to that door. Next, we have this bike rack right here. Our third element is gonna be lithium. So I'm just gonna imagine that instead of bikes attached to these bike mounts, it's just a bunch of lithium batteries. All right, across the way right here, this little solar panel thing, whatever that is, I have no idea what it is. We have beryllium, which reminds me of a bear. Beryllium. So I just imagine a bear kind of cranking that with an Allen wrench or just kind of sunbathing there or just chained to that thing. All right, let's keep walking. Our next element is boron. And I'm gonna use this little post here. I don't know what it does, but I guess it blocks cars from coming in here. And I'm just gonna picture just kind of maybe bore, boring like the action of boring a hole. Imagine this is boring a hole into the ground right there. And now this is my fifth location, right? I had one, two, three, four, and five. So I might make a little mental note that five is here. So I can quickly jump to this if I want. Every five I like to jump uh, or have an image so I can jump there. So five, I'll think of like five boring machines, boring a tunnel. That's number six, all right? And that's gonna be carbon. It's a parking lot, so you put your car there. Let's keep going. Number seven is nitrogen. I'm just gonna think of like a nitro booster on the back of a car, just kind of like, shooting flames out the back of the car. I don't know, I just think of like a nitro booster. Then we're gonna use this open space here, the next one, number eight. For oxygen, I'm gonna picture just some barrels of oxygen or oxygen tanks, it's kind of like I use on Everest. So they're just kind of stacked up here, tons of them, that's it. Nine will be up these little stairs here. If you go up there, it leads to all the physics classrooms. And for here, I'm gonna picture just a bunch of flowers, which helps me remember fluorine. Flower, fluorine, close enough. Now, if we go up the steps here into the little tower here in the stairwell, our 10th element is neon. So I'm just gonna picture walking in here and it's just a bunch of crazy party neon lights. It's thumping in here, man. And because it was the number 10, I'm gonna just remember, you know, neon lights, clubs, thumping, it starts at 10 p.m. So that's it, that's the first 10 elements, you know, starting down there to around here and then the rest of them, up to 118, go all through the back rooms here, up through all the classrooms, down there. The whole department is holding the rest of these elements. So now let's get into the next step, which is layering. All right, so we've laid the groundwork. We have the essential elements, no pun intended. We have the atomic number and the name, okay. Now the next thing I want to memorize are the atomic mass and the boiling point, right? Which is a set of numbers. So where do I put them? In a separate memory palace? No, you, what you can do is layer them on top of what you've already placed along the path that we just used. How do you do that? Well, once you've learned what you've put there, you just walk through it, you go back and place new images on top of what you already put there. And when I say put them on top, I mean elaborate the story, connect them in some way, or introduce them into the image that you already had there. So you're just adding more context, more details, and that'll in turn help you remember the extra stuff that you're putting there, namely the mass and the temperature. Which leads me to step number four. Step number four is chunking. 
And this is kind of in line with being smart with your data, right? Obviously now I have to figure out how to memorize a two digit number well, and three digits sometimes for the atomic mass. And then the boiling point, which if you look at this list, it's a mixture of two digit numbers all the way up to four. So what I could do is say, you know what, I have a system that will let me memorize, you know, six, seven, sometimes eight digit numbers. So why not use that as this? The atomic mass will be the first part of that image. And then the boiling point will be the second or third part of that image. Namely, my personal, system is the PAO, the person, the action, the object. So I'll know that my person is always dealing with the atomic mass and then the action or action and object or just object will deal with the boiling point, whatever the size of that number is. And you need to have a number system to make this a lot easier. If you don't have that, you're going to be a bit stuck, but I think anybody and everybody should have a number system. And if you don't have one, you should go back and watch my videos on how to make one. So let's go back over a few of those examples that we already did for the groundwork and introduce or layer that extra information on top of it and what that would look like. All right, so coming back here to the stairs, right? That was location number one and we had hydrogen there. What we're gonna add on top of that is the atomic mass and the boiling point, all right? Which in this case is just one, that's the mass, and the boiling point is 20. Using my number system, I translate the one into a person, that's Alice in Wonderland, and then the 20 is either an action or an object. In this case, it's putting on glasses, all right, sunglasses. So I interact that new image or layer it onto what I had there, which was water coming down, right? Hydro hydrogen, hydrate, H2O, that's what the water was. So I have Alice in Wonderland kind of cruising down the water here, chilling, putting some glasses on. Now that was a pretty simple one, all right? Another one where the boiling point is actually a four digit number, okay? And that's for lithium. We have seven, that's the mass, which is James Bond. And the boiling point is 1615, 1615. And so I translate that into an action, a two digit action and a two digit object. So it would be James Bond weightlifting a chalkboard, 1615. Now we gotta somehow relate that to what I put there, which was the lithium batteries, right? Attached to the bag rack. So maybe those batteries are plugged into James Bond and it allows him to be superhuman in strength, being able to lift or pump iron with these chalkboards that are super heavy. All right, so step number five is to do something that I call parallel storage. And I borrowed this idea from computer science because sometimes you have arrays which stores data and sometimes you use parallel separate arrays to kind of help you pair information from the same set, if that makes any sense. So what do I mean by that? The arrays in this example are your memory palaces. When I look at this data, the names and the dates of discovery trouble me because they're complicated, right? It's a bunch, it's another four digit number and the names are long and French and complicated. So I, I feel uncomfortable layering it on top of what I've already put there. You could do it, but then each image now gets really bogged down and convoluted. So in my mind, sometimes I'll just do a separate memory palace and the position in that palace will just mirror the position for the element that it represents in the other memory palace. So hydrogen, location one in memory palace one will pertain to the first location of the separate or parallel memory palace and whatever information is there. So if I want to know the creator, discoverer, whatever of element number five, I would go to the fifth location in my second memory palace to get the name or the year. And then I would know in the first memory palace, you know, the other information pertaining to that specific element. So it's the location within the memory palace, whichever memory palace I'm using that tells me across the two, which one I'm dealing with, they're the same. So for this one, I can't quite take you there because I actually used for the parallel memory palace, I used Everspace Camp. So in general, don't be afraid to use separate memory palaces to store information related to the same thing. So there you have it. All of those five tips are kind of what went into me memorizing that massive amount of information. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and that you're able to use some of the tools and tips that I gave you in this video to not just memorize the elements. And, and maybe I'll do another video that actually shows how to memorize all the atomic numbers and all the elements, but you can use it for anything. It doesn't have to be elements. Some of the tips I use are universal for memorizing just anything big, complicated with many layers for the long term. See you in the next video. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, all that jazz. I have to say that every video, but 
You guys know the drill. I'll see you later. So back to the sponsor of this video, I'd like to thank Mind Lab Pro for being a part of this video. Now for the last year, I've been working with them and using their product, and it has been improving my cognitive performance all year long. And I highly recommend people out there to give it a try. Now's is the best time to do it better than any this year, but this week only until the end of the year, everything on their website is 10% off. So check out the website and take advantage. Why not start the 2022 year off on a high mental performance note? Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video.